Zambia has abundant water resources. However, climate change and El Nino have reduced the reliability on historically plentiful rains. Coupled with population growth and an expanding economy, Zambia's water users compete for the resource. To manage and safeguard Zambia's waters, the government responded by introducing the Water Resources Management Act of 2011, which is based on the principles of integrated water resources management. WAMA is a quasi-governmental organization whose mandate is to conserve, protect, allocate Zambia's water resources equitably amongst all the competing users and users. Water resource management is important because you see fresh water is finite and it is also vulnerable, vulnerable to pollution and vulnerable to depletion. So when you are in your own cocoon, you might think there's plenty of water, when in actual fact, when you consider all these competing uses or in, and needs for water, there is not enough water to go around. In Zambia, if you look at the country, we have places that have plenty of water and others do not have enough water. So that calls for the management, both of the land, the people, the economy and everything. We have come up with a game that we usually uh, play with uh, the local communities or they play amongst themselves given a particular resource or an amount of water, how would they share amongst themselves? And it's quite uh, very interesting to see how the people you know, think in terms of uh, sharing the, resor the resource. The game itself has components on it, like depicting different water users on a catchment. And so we might have farmers, we might have uh, industries, we might have lodges, or water utility companies, all such different users. So they all come around the game, and so each one of them will own one of those facilities. And then we have the members on the game, which represent water basically. And so when the marbles run, it's basically water flowing. And so when the water is flowing, each one on their own land or plot, they'll be able to, to, to tap that water by way of more or like weirs, even a pump, they get the waters. So when we, we release the marbles to flow, each one gets the water. Then from there, we look at who has gotten the water and who hasn't. And then from there, we can discuss like, okay, why have someone gotten the water? Why did someone get more than they required? Tuabona kuti menda alundugogu aleya aleya wamuba la ilala ino baba ilala baya taba komani. Pena sikuwa no turi kumulundu kuno tuwa komana kai tuwa jana menda manjaanji. Uhirawa ya wajipati chakuti menda tanyonyonwi. Pere tegwa abere ha munga botu. Olo ita kate ni gobele ha menda ansaizi iwe ndira na ajiha ngo chotia ni chochisi. Mapenza menda kwari kapati kumani na munga nanga menda ayabujea. Kambuka mapenza alibu wa menda to we dambeo to in the oviro kambuka mika kujia kwa menda. Menda ya ahira atarajiruri andi kwa haka pati kungombe. Mwemwe 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 mwone mwemwe mwemwe matrofi za ngombe ngotu jisi. Menda agwa kwa kutara atarajiruri ala kwa haka kunywa ngombe. Alimwe agusebe ya anganda agutirambeo. The trainings take place on more than 30 demonstration sites, each of them showcasing a way to harvest water and use it efficiently. The scope ranges from individual rooftop harvesting with cattle troughs to communal earth dams with solar power drip irrigation systems. <laughs> The trainings showed a practical element of water resources management, 
When it comes to demonstration sites, exposure to them leads to water use efficiency and enhanced climate resilience, as was the case of the next smallholder farmer. So by the time we were at the core of every training is the importance of water resources management among water users and smallholder farmers. <laughs> But this does not only apply to our smallholder farmers, but to all water users, including domestic water use.